Now every now and then I get the urge to open up the old portfolio which is about 20 years out of date and try and re-establish the artist in me. You know the right side of my brain says I'd like more creativity in my life. The left side says go for it you've got two and a half minutes knock yourself out loser. Inevitably, I tend to get disheartened and say to myself that you know, this is the work of a six-year-old and storm upstairs and cry and bury myself into a pillow. But today, um, oh, what's this? This is not mine. Hmm. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, I know what this is. I've been looking for this forever. absolutely stunning pencil drawing as a wedding gift from a friend I used to live next door to in Crowborough in East Sussex. Roll on a couple of years and when we moved house I couldn't find this picture for love nor money. I searched high and low and I was devastated that I could not find this and here it is. million memories flooding my head from fishing to music from art to break dancing everything I do I tribute to these guys right get yourself together we're going to Devon of planning and several litres of coffee, we drive through the night and head down to Kingsbridge in Devon where we're going to meet up with some old and some new friends. just happens to be the most beautiful carp syndicate called the Emperor Lakes down in Kingsbridge. And with the help of a couple of friends and some decent string pulling, we managed to wangle ourselves two days fishing as well. How perfect. lake itself is stunning. There are some huge scaly monsters in here and a plethora of wildlife to photograph. I'm in heaven. And if that wasn't enough already, I've joined some new friends too. I had fallen head first into love with another complete stranger. Yes, we're back on the bank with our good friend Frank and this guy. This is Frank's son, Guy. He's an awesome angler and an all-round nice guy. I've got to stop saying no, no. The two of them arrived last night and already Guy is showing us how it's done. What an absolute stunner. Look at the size of those plates. 
proper beastie. Oh, thank you. easier and a lot more fun. The lake is owned by one of Frank's good friends, David Lidston. And please don't ask what this story is about. You really don't want to know. David's knowledge for the ecosystem of the lake is truly impressive. He's an all-round naturalist and a fellow twitcher too. I asked David a little bit more detail about the lake and where it all started. Thank you so much for inviting us down here. Such a gorgeous place you have here. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's thanks enough. Thank you very much, Simon. Yeah, beautiful. So, yeah. so give us a little bit of a background about the, the lake itself. The lake, about 30 years ago, it was built on a sloping site yeah. by uh, John and Ka Catherine uh, Barron, yeah. um, become close friends of mine. And then I was in a fortunate position after getting my water in France, selling that up about 10 years ago, 11th season now, to become the owner of it okay. after being a member for 20 odd years. So, yeah, in brief, that's where we are. Very different under their ownership, as it was their right. Yes. And now uh, I've just, dare I say, taken to another level. Yeah, yeah. You know, in a different direction. Yes. Um, just because, like angling, we take from, you know, we take from different things from it. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. but I had a good basis to work from. And, what I've uh, taken on and then took forward is, is, is as I say, quite different. Yeah. But I had a good foundation, so yeah, it's absolutely been a lucky man. St stunning, absolutely you stunning. Know, been a lot hard of work. work, a lot of work, a lot of work, a lot of heartache. Yeah. Um, but then again, nobody's going to cry for me because I mean, look at it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a bit different when it's coming in southwesterly ten sideways. But yeah. that's what we do, yes. and it's very rewarding because if you do make mistakes with managing the land, nature will put it right. Yeah. And you have a lot of successes, you know, lots, you know, weather-based setbacks. Yes. Yeah. But it's a nice way to make a living. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, it's a nice one. And when you, people like yourself come and appreciate it, that's all um, cherry on the cake, really. Yeah. I, I don't know how you, you cannot love this place. When yeah. You come down. Well, it's. I've ended up with something. I don't know if it was auto suggestion or, or just good luck and good fortune. But years ago, I read an influential book to me. It was um, written by a guy called George Charman, and the cover of that shows uh, an estate type like. And it's uncanny. I've actually posted up in the past where I've taken a similar angled photograph and compared the book from 30 years ago, yeah. and it looks similar. And I often wonder if that was in my mind what I was trying to build yeah, yeah. because it's so uncannily alike. Yes. So maybe it was always a seed in my head yeah, all yeah. those years because we all have different ideas on how to do things. Yeah, yeah, of course. But I let the land dictate really yeah. now. Yeah. Let the land dictate yeah. and do what needs to be done. And the fish you've got in here as well? Yeah, we've done some very nice fish. Um, we had a good basis of stock. I'm now doing something. Uh, with a guy called Chris Manifold, as some guys will know, and we've got another generation of fish coming through, heavily scaled fish. We have, you know, we've done numbers of 50s, we've got a good head of 40s. Um, so traditionally, we've always produced good fish, so there's a lot going on with the chemistry of the water and all the rest of it, yeah. and all I'm doing is giving it a leg up wow. and just enhancing it. Yes. You know, and that involves some quite invasive management sometimes, yeah. tree felling and one thing and another, yeah. but look after the land and the aquatic environment will follow. Yeah, yeah, and I really do think that the two are very, well, they are closely linked. Yes, what yeah. falls on the land ends up in that lake. Yeah. 
So I'm keeping the water and nature will keep the rest for me. Yes. You know, so yeah. it's simple philosophy, but you've just got to do the work. Yeah, 100%. 100%. You know, and um, yes, there's mistakes to be made and other people do it differently. Yeah. But this is how I do it and that's the product. Yeah, that's wonderful. You know, and, you know and I, I, I take great pleasure in, in you know, genuine anglers saying it's ticking the boxes for them. So that's, as I say, yeah. reward enough. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's you gorgeous. Know. So the wildlife here is You've phenomenal. Noticed. It's You've phenomenal. noticed. Well, yes. What have you seen? Uh, I've seen the black cap. I've seen a pair of bullfinches. Yeah. I've uh, got a very friendly robin. Yeah. Just sitting Has in you seen the, any of the raptors at all? Um, any I've buzzards? I've seen the buzzards. Yeah. Um, I may have seen a kestrel this morning. Yeah. Is there any peregrine? No peregrine yet. Very often yet. peregrine. Yeah. Very often peregrine. What about any snakes? Any snakes? Lots of snakes. Yeah. yeah across the water. Yeah, grass snakes. A few about yesterday, yeah, I noticed. Yeah, yeah. Great yeah. spotted woodpecker. Yeah. Heard the owls last night. Oh, yeah. Just... Tawnies, yeah? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Lovely. It's such yeah, we amazing. have barn owls nesting on site. Oh, wow. Yeah, and roosting on site. So, yeah, yeah, it's nice that you've seen some of it. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. So, yeah, we get a lot of blown off, as I mentioned earlier, blown off from course. You know, so it's nice that you're seeing it. Yeah, yeah. And it's, we don't have the road noise either. Yeah. Which sort of adds to it, you I know. Think that's kind of like part of the appreciation thing. I want to sort of put that, you know, it's not just about the fishing, it's you know, surrounding. Oh, absolutely. Nature. And you get it completely just yeah. by, you know, saying what you've seen. Yeah. And it's, it's importantly what you've heard because that dawn chorus and the evening song is fantastic. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, so yeah. there's one twitcher to another. <laughs> uh, you know I mean, it, it's, you know, just call back if you're passing the door. I know you've got reasons to be here down sometimes. Definitely, definitely. Because it's, yeah, it would just, just come and look at the wildlife. Yeah. You know, Thank you, Dave. That's You're welcome, really, mate. really kind of you. are welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I shall definitely be taking him up on that. Thanks, Dave. There's plenty of opportunities to photograph birds and chase butterflies, but for now, whilst the weather's good, I need to use this time to focus on my fishing. Now, the many chinks in my armoury I don't feel that I've got a go-to rig. I think I've been pushed and pulled by the media and, well, just myself really, but it'd be good to listen to somebody like Frank and see what other opportunities that I'm missing out on. Uh, I'm going to show you a rig that I've used for that, I don't know, probably 30 years. Yeah. And uh, everyone, I get some people take the mickey out of me saying, oh, I can't use anything else. And I say, well, yeah, I, I use other rigs, Ronnie rigs and uh, chods and, you know, all manner of D rigs and stiff rigs and hinge stiffs and stuff. But this, just keep going back to this because it's so reliable. Right. I know it's super efficient. Yeah. It does everything I need it to do, unless I'm fishing heavy snags uh, or certain situations. Yeah, yeah. So I thought it'd be a good starting point uh, for people that get a little bit confused about rigs. Yes. And uh, so I'll show you how to tie it. It's very basic, there's yeah. nothing fancy. Cool. That's Just use like. reliable <laughs> elements, yeah. uh, the idiot proof and bomb proof. Right. And I'll explain why I use them because, uh, and the types of things. I mean, I use, it's not a blatant plug used it for donkey's years. If you're using a coated hook length I use the PB jelly wire generally in 25 yeah. or if I'm fishing on the continent I'd probably probably go for the 35 right. but the 25 is pretty good. Okay. So you get about I don't know 14 inches. Always make the rigs a little bit longer than you would want. Yes. So you've got some room to play. Yeah. Uh, and then I use this expensive stripping tool that I've got here. You get about six inches. <laughs> Just get it off. <laughs> And then uh, <laughs> make myself a little double loop. And what I do, uh, so I get the the hair the exact length, yep. and the, the separation, I always put the bait on. Right. I've been using this bait here. Now a lot of people use wafters or pop-ups, yep. and I decided yesterday is to do something a bit different I thought well all the freebies are on the on the bottom yeah so why mess about I'm just going to use a straight bottom bait so yeah. using 18 miller uh, this is a bait we've been testing actually it's, uh, it's been doing really well so I'm quite pleased about the moment so you're just putting the boilie on the yeah on the hair. that's cool right now <coughs> hook choice 
some companies don't even make them anymore is the long shank hooks right. this was a now a defunct brand ace but i think a company called carp spirit do the same hook right. and this is the size five long shank right and the size five just happens to be the most perfect size for a lot of my fishing yeah and i get them uh, hand sharpened by a friend of mine yes uh, lee from a company called rigget yeah now there's several companies that do hook sharpening and they're all very good yeah. obviously it's their main core thing yeah uh, but he does them and they, he's an engineer and they, 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 they're awesomely sharp i can't possibly sharpen them as good as that right uh, so he does them for us and they're, they're ridiculously sharp huh. and uh, so i've got the size five long shank so what i want to do is literally have it about five millimeters away so the bend of the hook is five millimeters from the boilie right so I'll trap it get it in position about minimum six seven times round yeah and then i get the put it through so it's a knotless knot yeah but to make it much stronger so it never slips i put it through the eye twice uh, okay that's cool and that really locks it in position yeah it's not locking it that way it's locking it when you you can actually pull the hair and extend it the other way right if you've not put it through twice right uh, okay. you'll only find it when you come in an emergency to use the same rig yeah and you'll be pulling the hair and it'll suddenly go longer right so that locks it in place right, right so we, we've got the basic yeah straightforward stuff there yeah. right now i go to uh rs supplies electrical supplies yeah and I get the 1.6 clear shrink tube yep. and that goes down really small okay and I use that for the blowback and for the liner liner right you have a piece about five mil long yep. another piece about I suppose 10 mil yeah if you put silicone on like a lot of people do for this little blowback even a bream or a small roach or anything can blow it back and disturb the presentation yeah. but with the shrink tube that shrinks tight on the shank of the hook it doesn't do that only a carp can do that right right so you know if you had a carp had it in its mouth must wet it put that on. you got to tease it over the knot yeah right so there's that down there so you got your shrink tube there yep next piece i just cover the knot itself right now a lot of people would leave it like that with the with the coated hook length just coming out of the back of the shrink tube yeah it still works good yeah sits perfect but i like to line align it for a, maybe a couple of percent extra right it forces it to sit true on the point of the hook okay so i'll just get the baiting needle make an hole in the top of the shrink tube yeah yeah there we go so it's exiting at a right angle like that. Uh, okay, know. I gotcha. And then I always have a an open top kettle. Mm. A lot of people hang the rig in front of the superheated steam. Yeah. The problem with superheated steam is it's hotter than boiling water. Right. But to get it to shrink the shrink tube, you're there for about 15 seconds spinning it around, yeah. or 20 seconds. Yeah. And it can really damage things right especially nylon if you're using nylon forget it it's going to damage it and you'll be down to about 30 percent of the actual breaking strain right even with fluorocarbon okay so what i prefer to do if we bang the kettle on yep once you've got your kettle boiling the open top kettle i turn it right down the heat so there's no flames can possibly come up the outside mm. get it down to a minimum and then and just steep the whole lot in there no okay. clem and all that's it it's done Bam. Huh. and it's much better than agitating in front of the spout yeah, yeah it's yeah. all done and done uh, and dusted that's and really cool then you can just adjust this and one other little thing i always do is i get the scissors and see see where the liner on liner is there's a there's a little bit too much shrink tube yep. sticking mm, yeah okay there's nothing can go wrong and then it, it's just literally it sits perfect. perfect gripping like hell yeah you can see it there with the heavy bottom bait when they suck it in it's primed and looking for a grip in, in a nanosecond and it invariably works yeah and uh, there isn't many rigs that don't move at least 10 15 mil before yeah. they start looking for a grip well this this is sat yes 
primed. So the minute it comes into contact with the floor of the cart's mouth, it's, it's having it. Right. Bloody hell. So that's something nice and simple. And then yeah. I get, even with the bottom bait, about one inch from the from the hook, I get the uh, heavy metal like this, this this stuff here. Okay. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just put a little teardrop on. It, it accentu accentuates the uh, the effect of the drag across right. the floor of the cart's mouth. Okay. And it's certainly true of if you're using wafters you need this on to because a lot of things bobble around in suspension yeah. I use wafters that are fairly fast sinkers right a lot of people think the wafters should be critically balanced and so, well that bobbles around when the cart comes in to get it it can easily move right, out right. of the way or yeah yeah I see. or lift up in the mouth and I want all that weight down on the bottom lip on the floor of the cart's mouth yeah so as I say about an inch away I'll uh, I'll just put a blob on make it like a mouse dropping yeah couple of smaller blobs down the hook line right well that just creates that you know just helps it yeah there's enough there for him to suck it in without feeling that and then bang oh that is definitely one for the rig board so simple i think i've just been lost in buying bits and making all these crazy contraptions that i need to strip it back and start again right then from one warwick to another. Whilst it's quiet on the bank, it's a great opportunity to chat with Guy and find out more about his fishing, his influences and the only way is Essex. So, how long have you been fishing for? Since I was very young, <laughs> I'd say. Five or six. Yes. Um, as a family, we used to go to Angler's Paradise. Lovely. Lovely. So, Oh, that's cool. It started off, you know, with a stick and yeah. a bit of line, and I was using like three maggots, just catching that, that little silvers. Yes, yeah, yeah. Roach in the rod, so <laughs> it kind of started from there, really. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, you kind of got yourself into the carp scene. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, which was kind of going to be a natural thing anyway, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, amazing place, isn't it? Unreal. Amazing place. Perfect place for me. You've had a good result already. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful fish, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mega. You've obviously had a little, you know, great little moments with your dad. Yeah. Um, he's obviously an awesome angler anyway. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you do your own thing. Well, when we're fishing, like, around Europe and that, we have our own little battles between each other doing our own thing. Yeah. But when I've seen him catch some of the big ones, I always took a bit out of his, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that amount of knowledge he must be feeding. Yeah. God, I mean, you, you know, obviously you're a clever guy and you obviously, you know, know your stuff, you've had some fish already. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously, like your dad's a big caster, you like casting? And oh yeah, I love my casting. Yeah. I'm probably more on the accurate side, you know, shorter, short cast, but I can keep it accurate. Right. Get That's it, cool. get it on the spots I need, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about boats? You're in? When I need to, do you know, under the trees, yeah. if, if there's a tight spot, we can't get there, yeah, I love a boat, just yeah. straight under. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, there's so much influence. As I say, like uh, you know, obviously, from, even from my point of view, yeah. like your dad, for me, growing up, and I wouldn't say your dad's that much older than me, but I did learn so much from him. In I, mean, a, I mean, in an hour, yeah. just sitting with him, you can learn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Too much. Yeah, yeah. I know that's it. Retaining that information. So I've just got like used to listen, you know, to the convos, and I can just see it all yes. as he's taught me other people taking it in yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. almost like yes. the same kind of, and I kind of process see yeah you both working together and i see that lovely sort of neutral respect oh yeah you know he, he loves you as an angler and obviously you, you know yeah can't not love Frank, i think you? when we fish together it's probably the best for yeah. us yeah yeah because yeah. we work off each other and do our own thing as well as giving each other's ideas where yeah. we think's best and stuff yeah so do all your mates kind of think you know and I want to sap the knowledge out of Guy. Yeah. yeah. I'd say, well, let's just start getting into it for you, my mate. So yeah. we're going to start going, you know, as a group yeah. over yeah. to France. We've still got all that to come, like yeah. the journeys and stuff. Perfect, man. That's so that, cool. that's, that's going to be mega. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great upbringing. And I know Frank's, a, you know, into his nature and, you know, he's obviously passing that down to you. Oh, yeah. 
I yeah. love all the birds and the wildlife. Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic, isn't it? It's part of fishing, I guess. Isn't yeah. It? yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, that whole appreciation of where you are and yeah. you, know, you can't really not do that here. Can oh, it's so. beautiful, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Obviously, when you're fishing with your dad, yeah. is there anything that annoys you about him? Or bit, or? I'd say one of the most annoying things that he does do is when we're fishing together, he'll always nail the big daddy, the big daddy <laughs> of the session. Yeah. Always. So, yeah. I would say that. He's kind of, always got that on me. Yeah. <laughs> But you kind of not not expect that, but you know, he's he's a machine, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, he is, and he's got that little bit of luck to nail yeah, the big ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but, but I still got him to come like. Yeah. The more uh, trips we do. Well, mate, you you had the first fish, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. Result? Awesome. <laughs> now I know your dad likes a good cup of tea. Oh yeah. And has he given you all that knowledge how to make a good cup? And well, I'd say I'm the best in the family at making tea now. Well, Oh, there's a challenge. He yeah. thought he was the best until I took over. Right, right, okay. But I mean, yeah, easy 12, 15 cups a day. Wow. Easy wow. like that. Blimey. Yeah. That's cool. Well, as long as you've got it perfected. Oh, perfected, yeah. <laughs> the Warwick way with the brews. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice chap. And a proper gent, just like his dad. A chip off the old block with some unique features. He'll definitely be a face for the future. And I'm really looking forward to trying out one of these famous Warwick brews. We'll see who's the master then. Now, with this amount of testosterone on the bank, things are going to get, well, competitive. So between Dave and Guy, they're going to see who can catch a carp from the top lake. And I thought I might just go up and just adjudicate, because obviously with my vision skills, I don't want to show them up, do I? A hearty warm welcome to the first international King of the Pond here on Emperor Lakes down in Devon. And it's the young versus the uh, not so young. And we're here on the stock pond, it's a lovely day, it's a slight breeze, and the fish go to 30 pounds. The youngster is full of beans, he's desperate to win. And why not? A million pound prize. It's not a million, what are you talking about? Anyway, the rules are very simple. If you don't catch a fish within half an hour, you die. No, you don't. Yes, you die. No, you don't. Sorry, you don't die. Um, may the best man win, and um, let's get this show on the road. I'll hand you over to Chris in the studio. Thank you, Bob. And, yep, this is definitely holding up. We've got the youngster who's going to take on the silent, quiet, low approach, and he definitely looks like he's, 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 he's been copied. He's been copied by Dave. Dave is definitely using the same tactics. They look like they're mirror... Who is that? That's Dave. What's he doing in a swim? That's, that's offside. That's a blatant offside. Dave is he's doing a poke. No, he's not. He's just now he's showing up here on his leg, but guy's taking no notice. He's doing the splits. What is going on? This is highly irregular. Now they're just sitting there talking. Moving and it's twitching and it's gone. The youngster is in. Look at the bend and Dave's doing a part. There you go. That's it, Gray. And the young lad is bending that rod and actually Dave's netting the fish wow that's incredible great sportsmanship great sportsmanship and there's the shake of the hand well done well done right then you join me back in Dave's swim he's uh, going for a few handfuls loose feed uh, not doing the bag approach uh, but he's still sitting there very stealthily you know he's keeping himself he's a little bit nervous um, he does that oh no 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 you think he's just a little bit premature no not yet, Dave. Wait. And there's a little man standing right next door to Dave. Don't know if he knows that, but and Dave looks like he's still got his hand. And the youngster's looking a little bit nervous here. And Steve! Steve, run camera! Camera two! Camera two! Switch! Switch it! And he, oh, we're back on. Dave, Dave's reaching, reaching for it. This could be it. This is good. And he's in! He's in. He's definitely in. Or he's into a read. No, he's into a carp. That's great. He's and he's going to help here from with the net. And um, looks like no problem for Dave. Yep, that's a good fish. And and he's in. Well done, Dave. Well done. Well, I could not be happier. What an amazing competition we've just had. The youngster guy with an absolute beautiful fish. Even more beautiful than my wife. Please don't tell her. And with all that money that he's won, one million pounds. There is no money. Oh, sorry, no money at all, Dave. You've got a gorgeous fish too, even more beautiful than my wife. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, Bob, and great play there, lads. Great play, great sportsmanship. And I think we're done here, aren't we? Aren't we? Where are you taking me? Right. <laughs> There's a little spot I've been baiting up in the corner. 
They were there this morning, I seen yeah. them. So if we sneak up now, we should have a good chance of nailing one. Do you think I'll have a bigger fish than Dave? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so, are we, are we creeping here? Yeah, yeah, if we keep it down, we're all right. Hopefully they're in there still. Is there a shop down here? <laughs> Have you seen the movement? Let's have a look around some kind of office. That little tough down there. Yeah, if you just go two yards past that. Yeah. Slightly right, I think that's back on. Right. This is a little bank of weed. Yeah. Just before that. Like, yeah. Okay. Just, just, yeah. Okay. Just, just past that, two yards. Okay. Overhand here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has got disaster written all over it. Luckily, there's some comedy music to support. And this is probably the ideal opportunity to go and make a cup of tea, or, or take the bins out, or move the house to the left a little bit. But yeah, give, give it 20 minutes. Maybe half an hour. Another little mirror, that's cute. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, have you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I do. And it would seem that this competition is far from over. And this one here is nothing, nothing like my wife at all. A stunning job. Well done, young man. Perfect condition. Cause are It's even got a little bit of green on it. Isn't yeah. It? Right. My first little cart from Emperor Lakes. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Fin lifted. How good is that? That is cute, isn't it? Stalking at its best. Isn't it? Stalked by a professional, landed by a novice. <laughs> I think that's the way you you'd call that. Uh, but yeah, what a character. Look at the colours. That's going to grow up into a bit of a beast, isn't it? Beautiful. Perfect condition. How quick was that take? <laughs> you Screamer. saw it. You saw it actually. Uh... Feisty as well. Yeah, look. Look at him. He's angry. Chris is getting back. Let's see if there's anybody else who wants to come out and play. <laughs> <laughs> there she goes. Fantastic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got the net. <laughs> Hmm. 
Wow, that was really good fun. Thanks, Guy, and thanks, Dave. And thanks to Chris and Bob, too. Well, it's our last evening on Emperor Lakes, and I've really enjoyed it so far. I'm really hoping that maybe tonight might be the one. It's a lovely day and there's a bit of breeze coming towards us, so you never know. I'm going to redo the rods, have something to eat, grab a beer with the lads, and then I'm going to get my head down. It was a really quiet night, apart from the eel that I had about 3 o'clock in the morning. But hey, it saves the blank. There's a commotion in the next swim, and somebody, somebody, has had a fish. And guess who it is? The Terminator strikes again. Look at that. Just over 40 pounds, and just over 40 years old. Now that is an old carp. Look at the scales on her. It's incredible. Oh, well done, mate. That is a stunning, stunning fish. I feel really privileged fishing with this guy. You know, watching his technique, what he does, how he does it. It is truly impressive, and when you see the result, well, what do you say? He is the Terminator, but he's the Terminator in Terminator 2, the nice one, but Frank smiles a lot more. Anyway, hasta la vista, baby. Well, sadly we've come to the end of our Emperor Fishing Lake experience, but what a fantastic time. And especially with these two, these two are awesome. A great pair, the dynamic duo. I know Dave Lidston that owns the lake, and he's a hell of a character, as you've probably seen. And uh, I knew this would be a beautiful venue to come down to. Uh, it's a syndicate, obviously, and uh, you know, it's not easy, it's quite difficult. And uh, you've seen the guy Steve, he's done 12 nights, uh, he got his first bite after 12 nights. So we came down in a torrential thunderstorm, and. Uh, uh, basically, I mean, my, my lad guy, he's, he's not always fished, he's, he's, he's a footballer, you know, we play for Bolton Wanderers for the uh, academy and everything. Uh, so I let him do his own journey and he wanted to come with me. And uh, we thought it'd be quite interesting to uh, see how he goes on a syndicate like this and then we've got the top lake and everything. So it, it was just me and my lad, you know, doing the fishing, so it was lovely. and. Uh, Really, you know, he, he has a nine to five job and all this, but like most people do, and it, it was just a, he had a bit of spare holiday left, so we thought it'd be nice to bring him down and uh, do a bit of special time together, you know, like you do. But it's been great, hasn't it? I awesome. mean, yeah, you've well, done a lot of stalking up there with Cyan, yeah. haven't you? And with Dave. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Naga. <laughs> and it. Yeah, I mean, it's, and what more can you ask for? We, the, the sky's cleared and we've had beautiful weather, haven't we? Yeah. We're all a bit sunburned, yeah, aren't we? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, What's it, what's it like having your son fish with you? You must be super proud to see him catching and... Yeah, obviously. I mean, guys, he's always come fishing with me, but we, I didn't want to... The one thing with your kids is you, you, in an ideal world, you'd like them to have the same interests as you, but I like them to have their own journey. Yeah. So I'd never force them to do anything. And, uh, you know, they've always had that in the background or picked it up and put it down. It was... Angler's Paradise, wasn't it, where it kind of started? Yeah, because from being kids, we, once a year we used to go to Angler's Paradise, so they've grown up with it, really. And, uh, and then we got the river near where we live. and we, I mean, they've done it proper because they've always liked fishing for other species as well, you know, like chub on the river and things. So they learned to use a flow and uh, enjoy all the other species, how it should be, really, so that it's not just carp orientated. And so you respect the other fish. And that's that, that's been the case with you, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. And then I thought, well, you know, it, it would be nice if at some stage you fancied it more. And then, all, so I don't know what happened. This lockdown seemed to change everything, didn't it? Yeah. I and uh, yeah, he, he went it. completely mad on the fishing, you know, and it's, you know. And I got it's, the bug back massive, I guess. That's yeah, what yeah, because being, being 
sat in the house, you sort of miss fishing more than anything else. You suddenly realise what you had and that you'd lost. And I think that's happened to so many people. That's why all the tackle shops have been cleaned out and everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then when we go together, I mean, we're, we're like best mates, you know. We, I am the same with the other two children as well. And uh, we're, we're not like the father and the children. It's like, because they're grown up now, you know, it's, it's like, you're never going to get them times back, so it's precious times, really, you know. And, and uh, everyone who, who's watching this will probably probably resonate with that, you know. And uh, it, it, there's nothing like it, is there? Really, it's a separate thing, you know. It's that that specialness. I mean, I I, I, I was jealous of his scaly fish. You know, I caught an old warrior, the old forty, but I love them beautiful, big plated fish, you know. And he would have wanted to have caught the one I got in a lot of ways, wouldn't you? Well, I I, I love that fish. I mean, yours that you've got, got yeah, it's yeah, mega. mega. And you've got plenty of time to do yours, <laughs> yeah. haven't you? Yeah. Because he comes to Italy with us, and you know, to park up Dilla Brenta. And he's, you've had some monsters, haven't you, really, yeah. over there? But he, he still yeah. loves the English fish. Yeah. 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 That's the specialness of it, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you know? Yeah. And, the question uh, that we, we ask drivers yeah. about his tea making skills. Yeah. He's just he makes a better cup of tea than you. Do you agree with that? Well, it's funny, when we're in the house at home, <laughs> uh, how many have you made in the last two years? Probably none. It's like, uh, who's having a brew? Yeah, I'll have one, Dad. Because so, you're like the tea Trojan. This is every, yeah, every 12 I must minutes. Do, I must do 25 brew. a day. Go on, Minimum. Tro- <laughs> yeah. I taught them to time the tea bags and everything. <laughs> Mentally more than on a clock. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've got it down to fine. Four and a half minutes, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then uh, sugar and... Sugar in the tea bag in first, not the milk first. Yeah, and milk then first. four and a half minutes I've got to now. And then uh, take the tea bag out and add the milk very slowly and do a very slow. It's a professional it's level slow. now, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, sure. it's, a bit, it's a bit good. <laughs> Frank and Guy have got a really, really great chemistry going. You know, I know they're father and son, but they've got more of a friendship bond. And I think because they're you know similarities in fishing and life and that you know they just enjoy it and they enjoy it together which is really cool for our last night in devon we opted for a comfy bed we stayed at the old inn in marlborough last night it's about 25 minutes from where we were fishing a nice pot of coffee and a good hearty breakfast should kick the day off. I am truly excited about what's gonna happen next and I'm not talking about me devouring this. We've got a 20 minute ride over to the other side of Kingsbridge where we're gonna meet up with some old friends. If I think about it, I was probably a little bit nervous actually. You know, I haven't seen them for so long, but actually when I phoned them to tell them where I was and, you know, directions, you know, it was like speaking to them yesterday. You know, it was crazy. So this is me in the early 80s, a proper Goonies kid. We lived in a small town called Crowborough in East Sussex, and I had a really good friend called Tobes, he's the guy on the left, and his sister Emmy on the right. As families do, they go their own way. We ended up in Colchester in Essex and Tobes ended up in Kingsbridge in Devon. Our families did stay in touch, but inevitably we drifted apart. Well, several million years later, we're getting together again. And here he is, this is Tobes. He's changed a little bit, maybe a little bit taller. But one of the key reasons why I'm here is to see this man. This is Mickey, this is Tobe's dad. He inspired me to be a painter and to be a naturalist. And he also taught us how to fish. Mickey is a professional painter and he specializes in aquatic and wildlife and dabbles in the odd nude every now and then, which was most agreeable to me and Tobe's. He's an extremely well-recognized artist. He features in the Collins Guide, Reader's Digest, Sal of the Salmon, as well as exhibiting around the UK and international. He is a proper superstar. 
So fabulous to see you, Mickey. And um, you, it's, si. it's been a long, long time. 17 years? 17 years. Indeed, 17 years. That's way too long, isn't it? It and is, yeah. It was just, you know, an opportunity to come down here and I could not pass the chance of stopping by and saying well, it's hello. great to see you. Yes, really. it's <laughs> lovely to see you. You look very, very well. You haven't changed a bit. Neither of you. Well, a little bit. You matured a little bit. Yes. You've got yeah, a yeah. beard, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, bit of grey. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. But yes, you were such a big part of my childhood. You and Topes. You know, Topes was my good friend. That's right. And yes. you, you know, took us fishing. Yeah, that's and, right. Um, and uh, fished with your dad um, yes, three yeah. or four times. Yes. Um, great company. And, yeah. But, yeah. but yeah, I had some great times and great catches and good to have had your dad there and yeah. showed him that mode of fishing. Although he probably cares not to remember it. <laughs> um, I mean, I still remember us going down you know, towards Eridge and fishing the, the snaky yeah, brooks. Hamsel and, yeah, Hamsel Farm Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah I that love was that. great there. Yeah. So that would produce some really nice brown trout. Yes, and yeah. It was about that time I started to turn from worming to fly fishing. Right. But it was very heavily overgrown and it was difficult. Right. Sometimes you'd be wangling your rod through the undergrowth and just flicking the fly and hoping it was going to get through the hawthorns before uh, yes. the hawthorns stopped it. Um, <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I just, you know, part of my childhood when we lived in Crowborough, um, I remember into your studio and you'd have, you know, wings of a bird and fish and, you know, your study area was fascinating. Um, you know, because me and Tobes used to sleep in your That's studio, right. didn't we? Used to, yeah. yeah. With all those sort of ghostly, <laughs> maggoty, yeah. dead specimens <laughs> around. I don't think we, actually we did. We did once have maggots in there. Oh no! I should do this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Yeah, I I can remember somebody bought me in a J that had been a road casualty and it was past its best, definitely. So creatively, obviously, uh, no, I would have to call you a mentor. (laughs) It's actually something to look up to and follow. You know, your artistry, your your vision, your knowledge on wildlife, your fishing and your music. Well, that's kind of what I've been doing. For the last I only scratch the surface of all this really <laughs> I don't take the biscuit for but much. I think, I, think I, the... I again fed off people that I met that I liked like yourself yeah, yeah. with myself and uh, thank you Sai, for that <laughs> um, yeah you know your kids boost your confidence of course they yes, do yeah, yeah my yeah. dad's best fish painter yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm not the best fish painter not by a long chalk, Ooh, but uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> and the music, I think um, the, the people that I met in the music business, um, which included the great Robert Plant, yes, the ultimate rock star. Yeah, and um, it was great to meet him, and uh, we spent a wonderful evening with him. Um, he's on permanent interview, as all narcissists are. Yes, <laughs> but uh, what a lovely man he was. He, he really was a great guy. <laughs> But, so, uh, so you, you, when you meet these people, you got to kick up the backside. You yes. Know? Yeah. Come on, Mickey, you got to do better than this. Look where <laughs> this guy's gone. Look yeah. at the money the guy's earning. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I may not have made the money that I should have done, but I must say that uh, I had a quality of life which none of my neighbours had. Yes. And yeah. I'm not including you in that number. No, no, no. But, um, <laughs> no, I mean, you've, you've got a lifestyle which is fantastic. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Enjoying it. That's the main thing and bringing up your kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that, and that's what I always kind of like admired of you know, your relationship with Tobes. Yeah, it's been, always been good. Yeah, all been really good, good friends. And, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, he's that, my best friend. Yeah, yeah. He really that's that's absolutely It's amazing. lovely to be able to say that, that your son is your best friend. Yes. And, you know, similarly, there's no lack of love there for my daughter, Emmy. Yes. And she's um, up in Brighton, Yeah. 220 miles away. But yeah. uh, I get up and see her as often as possible. Yeah. But, you know, my kids fire me up. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And I'm sure yours do. Yes, yeah, of course. So the books that you've illustrated for, so can you give us a bit of a, you know, an overview of those for us? And... Um, for years and years and years, I think I was uh, six years in clinching the contract to um, illustrate say, Henry Williams and Sailor the Salmon. Yes. And that was the peak of my career, really uh, grabbing that contract was 
fantastic for me. It came at the right time. Yes. We just moved out. Well, in fact, it spurred the move from Sussex down to Devon. Yeah. And within sort of three months of the house hunting from Sussex down here, we clinched a property. Yes. And yeah. uh, never looked back. Yeah. So the children, it was a nice environment for the children to grow up in. That's one of the reasons for coming down because uh, I wanted something better than suburbia or even town life. Yeah. Um, you know, and Crowborough had both that, the rural element and the yeah. town element. Yeah, of course. It was a little bit dead end compared to the nearer Tunbridge Wells and Brighton. Yes, yeah. But it, yeah, it was all steps up the ladder basically, and we moved further and further away from London and the nucleus. But yeah, yeah. I still went in to see publishers to sell myself and into the galleries to replace paintings that sold and that sort of thing. Yes. What about the process to actually how you would approach a painting? Because I, I remember coming to your studio and there'd be like feathers and you know <laughs> fish and all sorts of things. You know, it was such an amazing process. Yeah, I think that I, I worked if I was doing say a study of, and it would often be a brown trout because yes. I think brown trout is one of the most beautiful fish that swims. Yeah. So I painted more brown trout than any other species. So I, I would catch them, I would photograph them. I would make sketches of them and particularly things of importance like the gill rakers yeah. and the yeah. numbers of flutes on the op operculum it's called. Yes. And all these little details of anatomy but I didn't want to get bogged down with, it, it, it irked me when people said oh your work's so detailed because it wasn't about detail, it was about form and shadow yeah. yes. and shape and light. Yeah. And, uh, they're far removed from detail yes. and so yeah. that was what I wanted to achieve yeah. and I studied um, the, the rock bed of the river where I fished and uh, I spent more time actually watching the water up there yeah. than I did actually fishing really? <laughs> or painting. <Yeah. laughs> um, but yes it all gradually came together. You've got a lovely picture of the carp on the wall inside. Now, how, would you, how do you start something like that? <laughs> Where do you start? That was an interesting one because, first of all, I wanted to draw the two carp together. And then in that picture, there's, I think, something like six or seven rudd yeah. and two perch, yeah. or a perch, one perch. Yeah. And um, it was juxtaposing them against each other um, to create an exciting situation. And the, the painting is simply called Summer Pond. Right. And it's a fully scaled common carp and a mirror carp yeah. just under the surface of some lilies. Lovely, yeah. And it really came together. The more I painted, the more it seemed to make sense. And yeah. it doesn't often work like that because usually the more paint you apply, the more depressed you get. <laughs> and you right. become. Okay. Uh, but th that one worked well. And I always remember the painter, Raymond Ching, saying to me, it's a good ethic. And it doesn't always work like this, but it's a good ethic to say, well, what I did. Um, what I do today must better yesterday. Yes. Yeah. But as I say, that's uh, a very hard discipline to adhere to. Yes. It's impossible, yeah. actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, we try and get better, and we climb up the ladder. And I think I saw each painting as a journey from rung one up the ladder yeah. to reaching almost the top. You never get that top rung. You yeah. never do, and you slide all the way back down to the bottom to repeat the process all over again right. on a different painting, of yeah. course. But, um, so you've never reached that top, top? No, no. Do you no. know something? However much people glorify a painting, me as a painter, I've never achieved the, the initial vision that you have. You make little sketches, little thumbnail sketches, and yeah. develop it, build it up. And never once have I achieved the vision that I set out to do. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So it's an eternal frustration. Yes. It, you know, you can draw an analogy between, say, a, a rock band um, coming out with an incredible number one hit. And yeah. then, of course, there's that pressure on them. You've got to do Good better next time. It's got to be a bigger hit. Yes. We've got to sell more copies. <laughs> and can we do it? Yeah. And often, no, you can't. No, no, no. So it's all a creative challenge. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, well, for me, I never felt like it, that ever held you back because your pictures just got better and better and, you know. They had to because they, they were dreadful to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were amazing. I think the... Um, well, I, say, I mean, it's, it, I'm so pleased that I've been able to pass on 
you know, some of my angling skills and, and in your case, creative skills yes. um, with paintbrush and what have you and yeah. all the things that you do. Yeah. And of course, our remarkable cameraman here, John. <laughs> Hi, John. <laughs> and doing a wonderful job. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's been a good life. Oh, that's good. I wanted to come up and you know do some fishing here, but I could not pass the opportunity to come and say thank you, and also you know for the, for the actual picture that you did for my for my wedding present. That's right. Which yes, is I the kind of that very well. The premise. The drawing. Yeah. The carp. Uh, Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Oh, sorry, <laughs> thank you for your friendship. <laughs> oh, it's really good to see Mickey looking so well. I think if my own dad had been alive, he'd have loved to have a catch up about fly fishing and rolling brooks. I want to know how he actually starts a picture. You know, what's the process? This is an absolutely stunning picture. Uh, two red shanks? Two I'm red right? shanks? Yes on bladder rack right and this was actually sketched i was waiting for the tide to drop back and watching these birds and uh, it's a detail and it was actually i was in corfu yeah and it was on a beach in corfu and uh yeah they were good little sitters to, to, or poses as the two birds but what i like about this one um, because this one in a way came as close as i'll ever come to the achieve to to the preconceived vision. Yes. Um, I felt that I got almost there with this one. Just single strokes of colour just put in like an impressionist would do with an oil brush. Yeah. Um, I like that going back to the whites of the papers, no white paint used at all. Yeah. Um, it's a pure watercolour yeah. and uh, I like what's happening with the waves here. That was gushing through there at times and meeting this water here. Lovely. And it just almost came together by itself. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. All this I put in just by doing very, very careful drawings of what was happening with the water going through here. Yes. You can see the current flowing through there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how long would it take you to start to finish? On that? Start to finish. Yeah. How long's a piece of string? But <laughs> uh, let me be more specific. <laughs> That's cruel. Um, I, I guess that um, I spent sort of half a day making sketches yeah. um, of all of this, and uh, the, the two birds came sort of fairly easily. Um, and then execution, two solid days, three, three, three days' work, three right. solid days' work. Okay, okay. Um, we talk about technique and subject and, and, and everything to do with art, and it is just fascinating. You know, I'm sure you can understand and appreciate the amount of time and effort that goes into these. They are simply delightful. And the best place to research this subject? Well, it's here, of course. So we've come down to the gorgeous Tor Cross, which is a beautiful beach, and Tobes, being the beach bum he is, is going to teach me how to do paddle boarding. Now, I'm pretty okay on a skateboard, and I'm okay on a snowboard, but when it comes to a paddle board, eh, maybe. Kneeling up is not a problem, actually, it's quite comfy, really. And, well, I did manage to stand up, which is pretty good. You know, the balance is still there. I think that, that'll probably do. That's it. That's all we need to see now. Isn't it? I think there may have been something wrong with my board. Because it just kind of kept leaning over too much. And like, even like that, that's not natural. That's not me normally. Uh, but yeah, look, look, look. Oh, see what I mean? It just leans a bit. I think there might be something wrong with it. Um, and that, oh, oh God. Um, yeah, all right, all right. Well, that was a really, really fun afternoon. The only thing hurt is my pride and I can live with that. I'm definitely gonna try that again though. You know, friendship is built on trust and good understanding. And even though we're on the opposite ends of the country, and we haven't seen each other for 17 years, here we are, all smiles, and it's an amazing thing to be together again. 
even if we had to miss another 17 years, I'm sure we'll be back on that beach smiling again. But hey, let's not leave it that long. And like the Terminator says, I'll be back. Anything you want to say, leave it in the comments box below or message me direct. I'm happy to chat, but I'm going to try and do a few more of these, maybe two a month, three a month if I can. And yeah, if you want to see more, obviously subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button, do us a share, tell your mates, whatever you want to do. I'll keep going as long as you want me to. Thank you for your help and I'll see you on the next one.